Hello? Hello? Hi. Good morning. Hello? <laughs> no, no, he has not spit you out. <laughs> hey, good morning. Just read my devotional? Cool. Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hi. How far do I walk daily? I probably... I don't, I don't walk daily. I run. I only walk during these walk talks because I can't run and talk at the same time. But I probably... I probably run... At least three and a half miles, sometimes, sometimes up to five, three times a week or so. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where are you guys at? Where's everybody located? Okay, am I back? I'm back. Yeah. Explain. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain that God doesn't spit Christians out of his mouth. Waiting on people to join. <laughs> and then I will definitely get to it soon. Where's everybody checking in from? Where you at? Good morning. Yep, yep, yep. Zimbabwe, Michigan, Charleston. Hey, how are you? What's up, Alabama? Wow. What church do I go to? I don't go to a church. I am the church. <laughs> England, South Africa. And I want to be clear, I'm not against going to church. You go to church. Great. <laughs> go to church. You're free. You're free to go to church. You're free to not go to church. You are free. You're free, you're free, you're free. So when when I say I don't go to church, I'm not trying to dissuade you from going to church. You can go to church. I'm just saying I don't personally I don't go to church. Not that I'm against church, but there's no local body of believers that are set on Jesus. <laughs> it's a lot of workspace stuff, it's a lot of law mixed in with grace. Um, Rarely do you even hear about Jesus in a lot of our churches. Not all of them, but they're, you know, I've tried to force myself to go to church and just deal with it, eat the meat, spit out the bones. But for me personally, I can't do that. I can't hear error, error, error. I can't hear having my identity mixed in with um, what I'm doing constantly. I can't hear continual behavior improvement programs and never get any edification on who I already am. I can't personally deal with that. I've tried, I've tried for a long time. Matter of fact, in a lot of my early books, I tried to encourage people to just go and just listen to it and just deal with it. But as I've grown and matured personally, I can't do it. Who knows what could happen in the future though? But as for right now, it's definitely not something that I'm going to expose myself to. Um, I've tried and I can just tell you that I feel more free not dealing with error than dealing with error on a regular basis. So that's my take on do what church do you go to? I get asked that a lot. What church do you go to? What church do you go to? And when I say I don't go to church, you know, sometimes people look at me crooked, but they, they just the in, indoctrination of thou shalt go to church, 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 or else it's rampant. And that's not the truth of the gospel. The gospel is not about going to church. If you go to church, great. But keep in mind, the first church building wasn't even erected until a few hundred years after Christ. So the directives that people will use from, for example, Hebrews 10, 25, do not forsake the assembly. That has nothing to do with church. Matter of fact, the very next passage, he's telling them to stop going to a building, to the temple. It has to do with them getting together to encourage one another about the once for all sacrifice of Jesus. And a lot of our churches don't do that. They don't do that. They don't talk about Jesus. They talk about how you got to continually 
do stuff, work harder, be more, do, do, do. It's the do, do gospel. And I don't deal with it. <laughs> so if we had a local body of believers, a local church that actually focused on Jesus and the new covenant truth, I'd be deeply involved with it. But for me, for my own personal mental health, I'm not dealing with it. So that's my take on that. All right, so let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and get started on today's Walk Talk. I wanna thank you guys for joining me. If you're new to my ministry, my name's Matt McMillan. <sighs> Spit out my gum so I can talk better. My name's Matt McMillan. I'm a Christian author. I've written seven books. All my books are available on Amazon and paperback and Kindle. Check them out if you get some time. If you enjoy my ministry, if you enjoy my TikToks, my reels, my memes, my devotionals, check my books out. My books go into very, very deep details of all the little bitty things that you guys see quickly on social media. Um, I study. As I study, I write. That's just part of who I am, my personality. And over the years that I've done that, I've written seven books. And all my books are meant to help build up confidence in who you are as a child of God, as well as in who Jesus is. If you can build up your confidence in who Christ is, you're going to build up your confidence in who you are. It's really that simple. And we have to shift our focus away from behavior improvement programs. We have to shift our focus away from attempting to do something to be more. And look at Jesus. Repent to Jesus. Look to Jesus. So for Christians, he lives in us. So he's always guiding us, he's always teaching us, he's always counseling us, never leaves us, never forsakes us as we learn and grow. Just because we're learning and growing, that doesn't mean God is coming and going. The Bible tells us that Jesus learned obedience, yet he never sinned. So what does that tell you? If Jesus learned obedience, you can learn obedience. Just because we're learning obedience, just because we are expressing our righteous new nature, that doesn't mean God is coming and going. That doesn't mean you need your forgiveness threatened. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. In fact, it means the opposite of all those things. So for my ministry, that's what I'm all about. Um, I want to help build up your confidence in who you are, who Jesus is, and then your relationships will improve, your life will improve, your self-confidence will improve, and things will get better. All right, so let's get to today's walk talk. Now, if you're new to my ministry, these walk talks are my little, um, if you want to call them little sermons, I don't like using that word, um, for what I do, <laughs> because it's not a sermon. I am a regular person just like you, and I'm just talking to you. I think this is how the gospel was truly meant to be shared, um, in a more casual setting, not where one person is up on stage. We, uh, look at them for every single answer. Um, if we ever want to be corrected, we definitely got to go to that person. I'm not seeing that in the, in the gospels, not once. And I want to do a side note here. The word pastor is only used once in the entire new Testament, just once. And it's not even listed in the three letters that most people will name pastoral letters. First Timothy, second Timothy, Titus, the word pastor is not even there. Now, were these two people um, pastors? Probably. Um, the word pastor, it's a supernatural gift. It's a spiritual gift of shepherding a group. Did Timothy shepherd a group of Christians? Yeah. Did Titus shepherd a group of Christians? Yeah. But they didn't look to them as a replacement for Jesus. They didn't look to them as we got to check in with them and make sure everything's, you know, we have to recenter our focus away from pastor centric to Christ centric. No disrespect to pastors. I love pastors. I have friends who are pastors. I have pastors who are watching this right now because I've seen their name pop up. I love pastors, but we have elevated that position to such a high spot. It's not fair to the pastor. 
the gospel was not meant to be what it is today in regard to looking to one person for answers. We are a body of Christ. We're a body. The hand doesn't do what the feet do. The mouth doesn't do what the ears do. We're all meant to be one. Okay, so let's give pastors a break. Let's stop looking as if they are anointed ones. We are all anointed. The book of 1 John says we are all anointed with the Holy One. We're all anointed equally. Anointed means to cover, to smear with. That is what's happened to you when you place your faith in Christ for salvation once. We're all anointed with the Spirit of Jesus Christ. This is not some kind of special gift for you, special gift for you. No, <laughs> we're equal. We're all equal, but we all have different gifts. I have different gifts, you have different gifts, and the gifts of the body of Christ are meant to build everybody up, to edify, and what are we ultimately edifying people toward? The grace of God. What's the grace of God? Who is the grace of God? It's Jesus. So all of the things that come to your mind where you're like, yeah, but Matt, look to Jesus. Yeah, but Matt, look to Jesus. But Matt, Jesus. Jesus is going to be the answer for every Bible verse that creates any type of fear, stress, condemnation, hierarchies, um, racism, subjugation, uh, misogyny, sexism. All these things are going to be erased when we look to the cross. All right. So let's refocus on that. Now, today's walk talk, let's get back off of the side note. Today's walk talk is about Revelation 3.16. So because you are neither hot nor cold, I am going to spit you out of my mouth. Yee! Sounds scary, doesn't it? Again, Jesus. <laughs> we can look at this passage through the lens of the cross. If God spit Christians out for not doing enough stuff, where is the cutoff? Let's just look at where they're coming from whenever people say that because you're not doing enough, God will spit you out. Where's the cutoff? Where do we know that we know I've done enough? I'm not lukewarm. I'm good. I've not, I'm not lukewarm. That's it. I know I'm not lukewarm. Where is it? The legalist will tell you. They'll give you a 10-point syllabus, a bulletin of you got to do this, 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 and this. Then you might be hot or cold. Now, here's another thing. It says hot or cold. Hot or, O-R, hot or cold. Let's go back to Revelation 3.15. The Bible says in the previous passage, <laughs> John writing on behalf of the vision that Jesus has given to him, says, I wish you were hot or cold. We don't hear that. You need to be hot or cold. Mm. What's that mean? I thought I got to be on fire. Got to be on fire. You know, get my sweat rag, my hanky. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm on fire. You know, <laughs> we've seen it. It's entertaining, but it's not the truth. It's not the gospel. Why, did, why does he not do it? Why is he not saying, you got to be cold. Cold, 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 cold. Running to the side of the stage and the side of the stage. He, we don't see that. We just see the fire part. Why? Because <laughs> they think that they're doing something to be hot. <laughs> but they don't understand that you can do stuff to be cold too. What I mean by that? How can you be cold? This passage is about, drum roll, purposefulness. This is about purposefulness. This is not about salvation. This is not about doing more than somebody else. <laughs> this is about the lazy church in Laodicea who had become super comfortable. And they were just kind of sitting on their hands, not doing anything. And they had become Luke warm lukewarm that's why jesus says i wish you were hot or cold just don't be lukewarm they had abandoned their first love what was their first love how do we become saved what is our first love 
it's Jesus. It's grace. Now, they hadn't lost their salvation because you can't lose your salvation. The only way you could lose your salvation is if the Father and the Son break their promise to one another. That's the anchor for our soul. Hebrews 6 tells us that by two unchangeable parties who cannot lie, God and God. We have an anchor for our soul. That is their oath, not ours. We access their oath by grace through faith. We are the beneficiaries to their covenant. So we have to understand the truth of the gospel and then look at this, knowing we can't lose our salvation. To lose your salvation, everything that Christ has done would have to be undone. That's never going to happen. All right, so we know it's not losing our salvation. So this is about becoming lazy. <laughs> Being lazy doesn't unsave you. Not expressing your righteous new nature doesn't unsave you. How could it? If it did, where's the cutoff? Anything that you can come up with to an answer to that is a work. And we are told in Romans 11, if it's based on works, it's not based on grace. And we, are, we see in Ephesians chapter 2, it is by grace you are saved through faith. Do you see it? This is about purposefulness. This church, this is a symbolic church in Laodicea. The book of Revelation is all symbolism, front to back. It's a vision. And this church had become super comfortable and they weren't doing anything to let anybody know about the grace of God. They weren't doing anything to evangelize, to express their gifts, to help save the lost, um, nothing. This would be the same as if I know I have these things that I can do to help you understand about Jesus, but yet, you know, I'm getting up I'm getting up today. I'm going to watch Sports Center. Uh, I'm going to go to Huddle House, have a mediocre breakfast, and then I'm going to go play golf. Does that unsave me? No. No. Does that take away my heavenly rewards? No. The reward rewards, plural, is not in the Bible. We all get paid the same in heaven. It is the reward of the inheritance. Christ. So we're not doing anything to earn more in heaven. We're not doing anything to maintain our salvation. So what does this mean? They weren't doing anything. Their lampstand was being threatened. What's their lampstand? Their influence. If I have a, a lampstand, that's symbolic for my influence. These churches had turned away from their original first love, which is Jesus. And they had ignored the truths of the gospel and they're being rebuked. That would be the same as if I got on here and I said, hey, you got a lot of gifts, man. You're talented. I know you. Use your gifts. Use them, please. That's not having your salvation threatened. This is symbolism. If God spit Christians out... Because of the cross, he would slurp them back up. Spit Christians out, slurp them back. We're not in his mouth. <laughs> Do you see that? God is not spitting, slurping, spitting, slurping, spitting, slurping based on what you're doing, being hot or cold. Do you see that? Now, how does cold come into play? Cold serves a purpose. Hot serves a purpose. Lukewarm serves no purpose. That's why this is about purposefulness. Purposefulness. So how does hot serve a purpose? If it's freezing outside and I come inside and I sit by the fire, that hot fire is warming me up. It's serving a purpose. All right. If it's middle of August and I've been playing basketball outside and I come inside and I get me an ice cold Pellegrino, that thing is ice cold. It's cold. It's cooling me off. It's serving a purpose. That's why Jesus says, I wish you were hot or cold. Just don't be lukewarm. Hot or cold. Just don't be lukewarm. Purposefulness. This is about purposefulness, not salvation. All right? So, I hope that helps you guys today. I hope it encourages you. And 
I hope it helps you have some more confidence in what Jesus has done. <laughs> you know, in, anytime you look at a Bible verse and you imagine fear, ultimately you're imagining punishment. Why would you be punished? Sin. Sin of commission, sin of omission. I'm not doing enough. <laughs> sin of omission. And those are endless. Okay? Your conscience can be seared through legalism that you're not doing enough. It could become an obsession. I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to do more. Okay? And then you might think I'm not doing it right. What is, what, when, you, when you're doing what you do for God, how could it be right or wrong if you're doing it for God? Give yourself a break. Make some mistakes. Let yourself learn, grow, mature, fall down, get back up. No matter what you do, you're good to go. And there's nothing wrong with you. you you're safe. You're secure. Jesus keeps you safe and secure. Jesus keeps you in himself. You have died supernaturally and you've been reborn supernaturally and you've been placed into the spirit of Jesus. He keeps you safe, friend. He's not gonna spit you out. He's not gonna say, depart from me, I never knew you. And I wanna touch on that real quick before I get off here. Matthew chapter 7, depart from me, I never knew you. This is probably the number one passage besides the Luke, besides the I will spit you out passage that those who struggle with legalism will use to threaten you as a Christian. They will say, why would these people say Lord, Lord, if they weren't Christians? <laughs> Even the demons call him Lord. <laughs> the demons know he's Lord. Just because you know somebody and just because, just because you understand who they are, that does not mean you have a personal relationship with them. If I said, I know Elon Musk. I know Elon Musk. I've done all these things for Elon Musk. I have a Elon Musk museum or you know t-shirt factory i do all these things for elon musk me and elon musk he's cool he's cool with me if i walked up to elon musk he'd be like i don't know you he never knew me i said i knew him and i did all these things in his name that's what these people were doing in matthew chapter 7 depart from me i never knew you lord did we not cast out demons did we not prophesy? Did we not perform miracles? Jesus gave them their answer. No. Not in my name. They're asking a question. Did we not? And he said, no. Never. I never knew you. Never means never. This is not a Christian who didn't do enough. If, th if this is lukewarm Christians... Then what is not a lukewarm Christian? I mean, look, they're, they're casting demons, they're prophesying, they're uh, performing miracles. What would not be a lukewarm Christian? What more would you have to do? Do you see that? So if Jesus said, I never knew you, who was doing these things? Who was ultimately behind this stuff? Satan. Paul even tells the Corinthians, he can appear as an angel of light. This happens in tribal pagan religions all the time. We see stuff on the internet where it looks like a miracle is being performed in a third world country and people are dancing around a fire and somebody's arm grows back or whatever. That's not from God. That's not from God. Never means never. They asked a question, did we not perform miracles? No, those miracles weren't from me. Okay, so who are they from? <laughs> Your father, the devil, he tells him that. <laughs> Not me, I never knew you.
And if we look at this section of scripture, he builds up to this. Start at Matthew chapter 5. Read Matthew chapter 5, Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, then Matthew chapter 7. Christ is laying down the law for self-righteous Mosaic law followers. Why do you think he said you workers of lawlessness? This is not people who are drinking and smoking too, drinking, smoking, cussing too much. This is people who were well behaved. They had 613 different ways to not sin. But Jesus tells them in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, you want to do that stuff? Okay. Just be perfect like God. Be perfect. And they're like, they knew they weren't perfect. He's exposing their need for grace. He's saying, repent from the law towards me because you suck at following the, the law of Moses. You can't do that. You can't. You have heard, but I tell you. What did they hear? The law. 613 different commandments, not just 10. Our modern church has cherry picked 10. You have heard, but I tell you. He's exposing the true standards of the law of Moses to law followers. And then he goes all the way up to Matthew chapter 7. And they're like, did we not do all this stuff? No, you never did the will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? John, he tells us in the book of John, the will of the Father is that you believe in the one whom he has sent. They have not done that. These are not Christians. These are not lukewarm Christians. So those who try to combine Matthew chapter 7 with Revelation chapter 3, just stop. Don't do that. You don't need to do that. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth. These are legalists. These are people who we never knew. And Revelation chapter 3 is about purposefulness, not salvation. All right, guys. So I hope you have enjoyed today's walk talk. I hope this has encouraged you. Always tell the truth about yourself. What's the truth? You're righteous. That's the truth. Second Corinthians chapter five tells us this. You're blameless. You're blameless. Why? Jesus. That's the truth. Colossians chapter 1 tells us this. You're holy. Colossians chapter 1 tells us this. You're a child of God. It's all throughout the New Testament letters. And John 1, verses 12 and 13. You're a new creation. You're brand new. Romans chapter 6, 2 Corinthians 5. You have all of these identity passages that describe who you are. Never confuse who you are with what you do. Separate them. Identity determines behavior. Behavior does not determine identity. That's why Jesus said, I never knew you. So, hope you guys have a great Sunday. And I'll see you on the next Walk Talk. Bye-bye.